Welcome to our 30th podcast. Today we'll be talking about the importance of flexibility in change management. And what's the one thing you can do now to maintain flexibility within your change initiatives? Keep listening to find out. Welcome to Harmonious Workplaces, a podcast about corporate culture, organizational change management, and workplace behavior. Harmonious Workplaces was started by independent consultants Rich Cruz, Ben Kleinman, and Cheryl Volpe to explore, challenge, and build on various organizational culture and change management concepts. It's a blend of theory and practice based on their personal and professional experiences working with companies of all sizes across various industries. If you own a business, lead a team, want new ideas about the corporate environment, or just want to listen to a group of consultants talking about how to make work more enjoyable, we invite you to sit back, relax, and dive in with us to Harmonious Workplaces. Hello, Harmonious Workplaces listeners. As always, we're so glad to have you here. Um, I'm Rich Cruz, and I'm joined by Cheryl Volpe. Hey, hey Cheryl. Rich. Hey, Ben. Hi, everyone. And Ben Kleinman. Hi, Cheryl. You gave away you gave away Ben's surprise entrance. <laughs> no. no, it's just that I'm looking right at him, and I couldn't do it. I couldn't not do it. You couldn't not do it. That's right. Yeah, and so we're here. Uh, Harmonious Workplaces is all about talking about organizational change, and because that's the constant, right? And. Uh, We've been uh, we've been talking a lot about cha- like making a culture of change that, that was in our last podcast, and in this one we wanted to talk about you know making sure that you're you maintain some degree of flexibility, right? Because mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. It, you know we were, we were just we were just talking just a second ago about uh, you know uh, yoga, right? And or 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 stretching after you exercise and all that stuff, right? Like you, you have to maintain some degree of flexibility or that rigidity is just going to set in and, you know, how do you move from there? Right. So um, what, what are your thoughts on being flexible in in a change environment? I would like to say that it's the reason it is one of the reasons why a company's vision and values are so important. You know, some folks don't put much weight in them or some people just think that they're, you know, corpse speak or they're just something that is being uh, forced upon us by the leaders that don't really engage us enough and it's just what what they do. But the truth is, those are your touchstones. And when you have a lot of stress that is related to change, or if there is ambiguity, or if there are unexpected setbacks, going back to those vision and values to keep yourself on the the track towards the goals can be super, super helpful. And you don't have to carve that out every time. You can go Mm -hmm. back to those as principles. And that's why they are so important to be thought through. And then then you can be done with those and, and have those as touchstones and those can also help you gauge how if you're being too flexible if you're going too far off the path from what your goals were in the face of adversity or setbacks sure sure yep i uh i mean that's we've, we've talked about you know culture and and where values kind of fits after the you've got those underlying assumptions that everybody is supposed to <laughs> be aligned to right but those values that happen there um you know if we if i, I don't know that I, I think there's some sometimes we have to be flexible even within that though like you know sometimes we have to because those values may may change over time because of perception because of you know, the economy because of, um, you know, the outside world, you know, uh, society changes, you know. So. True. It seems like there's an intentionality there, though. Like if you have a corporate value, like, I don't know, respect is one that I see a lot or integrity. You might change how that is applied or you might say our people are important. That's a that's a pretty common value. 
but in the last five years or so, it's become not not just a, 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 a placard to say that, but you have people really leaning into a lot of the benefits of diversity, of including voices that may have been marginalized or just not even thought about in prior generations or prior years from a bring those voices in. We want to hear them. They add to our discussion to make us a, a more resilient, better, more, more, um, more better pro- more, more better products for our customers for type of firm. And, sure. and so, y- you know, you see a lot of that. And so that to me is a very intentional or it should be, can be kind of a more intentional shift as opposed to being just, willy nilly with your values and sort of saying, yeah, this week we're, we're in favor of purple and next week we're all about pink. And next week we are so into green. It's just those types of sways that are, that are probably what you want to avoid. Yeah. 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 But it sounds like one of the things, Cheryl, that you were saying, which resonated with me in terms of the values and the vision is that a lot of times we've talked about that similarly in the sense of understanding your why and yeah. those, those really just foundational critical touch points, touchstones, those, I think if you're going to be, if you're going to be thinking about changing those and maybe the vision and the value is more overarching and the why is sort of, it, it, it maybe differs a little bit depending upon what your change initiative is as opposed to the why for why your company exists in the first place. But maybe if you're, if you're, if you're thinking about, let's say a change management initiative or a transformation of some kind, the why for that would be pretty stable. I think, unless there's some, again, major, like you were saying, Rich, maybe some sort of societal change or there's a technology change. You're in the middle of rolling out an ERP and all of a sudden AI comes along and there's an easy way to implement AI. Maybe you, pause and you think, do we want to do AI right now? Or do we want to bolt that on in three years or so? But that's an intentional thought about changing the why you're doing this thing. I think there's, there's, there's sort of that core fundamental foundational principle that's pretty stable, but then in terms of the how or the when, maybe that's where you allow a little more flexibility. So as teams start to wrap their arms around what specifically is changing with an initiative, how a given process should work in the ideal state. Maybe you allow a little bit of flexibility for that to get figured out down the road, as opposed to trying to bake that in from the, the pre-planning stages. Mm. Mm. Well, you bring up AI and um, I'm sorry, I was just artificial intelligence. Oh, get that acronym out. Hey, you, you got our first acronym today. <laughs> uh, um, so I was at this conference here in Chicago, um, the in, in, International Manufacturing Technologies Show, I believe that's what IMTS is, right? Um, and it's this massive show, huge show. Um, every It takes up like all four of the main uh, buildings, at McCormick Place in Chicago, right? Um, but one every of one of these conference and, and trade centers in the North America, mm. it's just yeah. massive, massive, yeah. right? Multiple buildings, four four about different buildings, hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah, exactly. And so at this show, um, and every the the one thing that remained the same in, in all of them was this presence of artificial intelligence in additive manufacturing and uh, automation processes and uh, uh, e- e- even in the way that we, you know, dispose of waste and that type of stuff. Right. And I, I had an opportunity to talk to people like Google and Microsoft and Amazon web services, AWS. And there is this hesitancy to adopt AI, right? So people are an inflexible, in, uh, in some respects to um, to adopt that in their system, you know, because there's kind of a lack of trust in it right now, right? Yeah, However, sure. you also saw demos that like showed that this, this does a lot of the things 
that we like from a data analysis standpoint, like it pulls in all this data from all over the place and can interpret it and 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 allow you to make faster, arguably better decisions, right? But one of the things that people were afraid of, and I heard people voice this was, I, am I gonna be out of a job or are my people gonna be out of a job, right? And so there's, there's this, you know, this inflexibility uh, there of, I don't really want to do this because it can affect, I, I don't know how it's going to affect me, right? So there's that, that unknown part, you know. Right. And what do you listen to when you're making that decision? You know, I mean, there's already been tremendous momentum towards if you don't adopt it and integrate it. And I don't want to get off on this this track too, too far and wide for me. I get no, no, I get it. If yeah. you don't, you will just, you know, sort of be pushed right off that, that cliffside and, and you'll be left behind. So how do you make those decisions? Sure. On a different um, idea with AI integration, I heard that Apple is going to start offering four different versions of AI integrated into their newest phones. And one of the advantages was that it wouldn't just show you uh, a summary of your emails when you're looking in your inbox on your phone. Or, or uh, ju- it wouldn't just show you the subject or the first few lines. It mm-hmm. would actually create a summary of the email, and the content, oh, so that so. you could re- just read the summary and get the gist of it. And that brought up all sorts of internal well, resistance for me because I, I didn't like the idea. Wait, does doesn't that feel gross to have like you've got a robot reading your email before you had a chance to read it? I was thinking about the <laughs> privacy part. It's a, it, I was thinking more about you know well interpreting the email such that I could say oh I don't need to read that whole thing. So lots sure. of human internal instinctual resistance ideas like that. But going back to what you were yeah. saying, Rich, how do you make those decisions when you're running some of those bigger companies that you engaged at that conference? How are they making decisions like that? Because how how will it affect themselves and their people? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 always cool to get those real world examples because you hear you know you read a lot in the news about AI this and AI that or any technology that's new. People are jumping on the bandwagon, people are jumping off the bandwagon and it's very much in the news, hype, hype, hype. But it's, it's so important to, to realize that it can act in this case, actually impact lots of people's jobs. And in this case, there will be a lot of adverse consequences to rolling out AI. You're going to see a lot of things that are maybe more, um, more repetitive and maybe more rote, just get automated. And sure. it's a dream for some companies because that means they can do things faster or cheaper or whatever. But at the same time, it's a nightmare for individuals and, and their managers because now they're either out of a job or there's the fear that they're going to be out of a job. And how do you deal with that? And 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 we were talking before we, we started this episode about reskilling and upskilling and things like that. And is there... Is there an opportunity for that? Is it the easy way out for a company to just say, no, nah, we we can't really do, we're just eliminating all these jobs versus, well, we're eliminating these jobs, we're automating them so that you can do more of the things that only you as a very smart individual can do, or only you with this very good set of expertise can do. We want you to focus on that, not on the putting stamps on an envelope. You know, we can get a machine to do that, but we need you to think about what the contents of that envelope should be. So it's those kinds of things. And I think, you you know, the better companies will come through that where they've figured out in our case today, topic today, where do they flex in terms of we have to automate to stay even in the game in our industry. We can't can't afford not to, but we have to figure out how do we keep our people and how do we keep them practicing, you know, at the at the top of their game, to the top of their skill set? And how do we how do we sort of be flexible how we get there? I think there's a lot of room for for potential potential there oh, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's a super timely and exact example of of our topic today because these companies who are integrating AI on the scale that we're talking about, 
it's kind of an experiment the whole way, right? And just not really knowing the impact on resources and what's needed to keep moving forward. I mean, there's, there's so many unknowns heading into it. I suppose, I suppose the upside is that everyone is kind of on the same footing with it because everyone is kind of heading into the unknown with the full impact of that integration. And some people are more comfortable with that than others. So yes. um, with, the, with that, why don't we take a quick break? When we come back, let's let's continue that because I have some thoughts on some of that. So I'm sure Can't you do wait. too. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll be right back. Dysfunctional organizational cultures and poorly managed transformations can devastate employee morale and motivation, leading to disengaged employees, poor work quality, and the loss of your best people. The impacts to your organization include high costs, low productivity, and wasted resources. At Harmonious Workplaces, our purpose is to help you build the best workplace possible. We are advisors applying proven organizational development and industrial organizational psychology methodologies to help you become your best organization. We are doers using time-tested principles to help you execute organizational change initiatives smoothly and successfully. To discover how harmonious workplaces can impact your organization, visit www.harmoniousworkplaces.com and book a free 30-minute information session with one of our consultants today. Again, that's www.harmoniousworkplaces.com And we're back. So we've been talking about uh, maintaining or me maintaining or creating or having some kind of flexibility in your change processes or your, your change initiatives, right? Um, and we've brought in some different some different scenarios there, right? But uh, let's let's talk about uh, you know what what are those things that might make people inflexible or you know um, any any thoughts on that? What makes people inflexible? Yeah, yeah all the, all the many many reasons for change being hard, right? All of those, you know. Sure. Fear, not understanding, no communication, lack of a learning culture, no curiosity, that uh, feeling that you're not a part of that decision, all of those things. All those yeah. things, yeah. yeah. Well, one of the other things that came to mind as we were preparing for this was, um, you know, looking at just people's personalities, right? Um, I was reflecting on uh, the disc, right? Well, the the the, uh, the assessment of uh, um, um, you know our our styles, the way that we behave, right? So there's uh, disc stands for uh, dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance, right? So um, those who tend to be on that like steady side. And even the compliance side tend to be, you know, they, they like stability, right? And they like to stay in the box, right? And so when we go and change that, and that's like an inherent, so it's like an inherent style, and there's a then there's an adaptable style, right? That they that they can be in. But you know, when you're in that 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 steady and compliance, I don't want to say box, but that's that's where that's where you tend to be naturally. Um, changing and, may, and having flexibility can be um, a real struggle, you know, just, just psychologically can, can, can cause you to go, I don't know about that. Right. Right. Um, right. So flexibility for folks like that is, are you thinking it's more of a stretch or it's more baked in? 
I think any, I think anybody can be flexible, but just like, um, just like when we exercise, you've got to work at it, right? So you've got to, you, you, you do have to, there, there are some things that you can do to train people, um, you know, even some simulations and, and the like that can, you know, role playing and, and that type of thing that can, that can help. So having that learning, you know, culture, um, and we were just talking about, you know, where you have to use different technologies, like new technologies and stuff like that, right? Uh, to have training and allow people to have, you know, the, to, to build up skills and self-efficacy so that they feel like they can do something. And and that's sometimes that's a struggle for people to embrace too, you know, in my opinion. My Especially this last minute. I mean... Building it into the culture, like we've been talking about on previous episodes about that learning culture and the growth mindset, those kinds of things make it easier. Sure. When it comes to it's changing. Yes. It, it sounds almost a little bit like something, Cheryl, you say very wisely in prior episodes in terms of knowing your audience. Right. Is that is that kind of what what the approach would be, Rich, in terms of figuring out if, if we use that lens of the four different personality types that a manager or a leader would want to understand who is going to be a little bit more flexible with this change, who's going to be a little bit more eager to jump in and, and test things or play with things or just say, yeah, let's do it. And who's going to be a little bit more curious or a little bit more considered or hesitant to, to dive into the pool with both feet. Right. Well, if uh, in in prior episodes we talked about, uh, if anybody remembers, another acronym that is not very well known, but uh, PIT, uh, Planning and Implementation Team. Right. Um, uh, almost every change management model out there has you has a a change leader to uh, uh one of the one of the one of the cores of what they need to do is to build a guiding coalition or this pit right and that pit needs to have people who are they they have some skills um they they can they can adequately communicate they know uh i, I think the most important thing is that they're agreeable to the change right there's 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 a certain openness to uh, the experience, and then there's this agreeableness to uh, help and and move people along. Um, arguably, they might be a little more on the extroverted side, you know, uh, uh, you know, because they're because you need people that can have some influence, you know. So, if, so it makes sense to some extent that people that have on the desk they're they have some dominance and some influence. Um, tendencies right uh it'd be good to have those on a on a pit not necessarily that that's that's all you want to have on there because you know <laughs> you want to have some <laughs> we you know there there's there's uh you know an, ar- an argument for that you know dark triad to start you know which we will talk about there, in a future which, episode i'm yeah yeah, just, yeah which is not inherently bad but right right cheryl that's you know but um you know, we just have to be careful about you know that, that mm-hmm. narcissism <laughs> creeping. That's in right. Too much, right. That's right. You need a certain amount of hubris, really, to to be an advocate or endorse something audibly, and and be yeah. heard, right. and trusted. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So it ties it, to me. It also ties back to stuff we've talked about on prior episodes in terms of using different communication vehicles, communication channels, methods, mechanisms, whatever word you want to use for that, but just tailoring your message to different types of people, but then using different ways to convey that message, repeat that message, reinforce that message, and let people intake it in their own way, in their own time through a variety of different vehicles. I've seen that work pretty well. Yeah. Um, have, you, have you guys, What's what's been your experience with that? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've I've seen where yeah, there's there's the communication style, but we've also talked a lot about um, you know creating those 
channels that are that have feedback. So you're getting the feedback yeah. back in there, um, and being able to adapt the way you communicate, the way you interact with each other, just your behavior in general, right? To that feedback. Um, so there's there's like this blend of um, discipline that you have to have in all of this and flexibility at the same time, right? So we have to maintain our course on to, you know, to achieving those goals. Uh, but yeah, we have to adapt how we communicate, when we communicate, what levers we're going to be pulling to, to do that, uh, you know, to, 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 to get to the end goal. I want to throw an idea out here and maybe this is a, something we want to pause on before we or take our another break before we dig in. But can you have flexibility at the same time as having a leader who is very driven and very outspoken and very inflexible about his or her vision? And so I'm thinking about people like Steve Jobs with a vision for Apple and it's kind of his vision or you're off the bus or Elon Musk for Tesla sure. and it's kind of his vision or you're off the bus. Can you have flexibility at the same time as having someone with that strong of a vision? That's a good question, Ben. And let's take a break. And when we, so, cause I need to get my, my gears rolling on that yeah, one. We get the thinking <laughs> fingers. Yes. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And uh, yeah. So after this break, We'll come back and talk about that. We'll be right back. Join Harmonious Workplaces for an inspiring session with Rachel Minion, co-owner of Rockstar and Moon, a dynamic company transforming the marketing landscape for small businesses. With passion, talent, and expertise, Rachel consistently delivers results that make brands legendary, proving that rock stars can truly change the world. Discover how Rachel has adopted an empathetic mindset to fuel resilience and pursue a game-changing career through periods of disruptive change. Tune in to episode 31 of Harmonious Workplaces, Resilience Through Empathy. Until then, remember, make change your friend. And we're back. So, uh, Ben, take it away. All right, so I'm teeing up maybe our, our version of a Zen koan where you have a leader who is very, very rigid, let's say, or very, very precise about he or she, how he or she wants to carry an initiative forward. And the classic example would be Steve Jobs and Apple. He had a vision for how an iPod should work and look and feel, and he had a vision for how that whole thing should go. Many other examples with that in Apple. You could say the same thing about Elon Musk and Tesla or any of his other companies. They're very driven, very focused. And if you don't like what their vision is, you're best off not playing in that sandbox. And so can you have that type of leader? <clears throat> Maybe a bigger, broader question is, can you have that type of leader and have any kind of change management within that? Or is that just like a, a really inviting a lot of fraught tension but for any kind of organization like that, do you have any flexibility? Can you have flexibility? Or is the flexibility that sort of lowercase flexibility that we're talking about where you, you don't have capital F flexibility in terms of this is the vision, we're building in a, you know, an iPhone, but the flexibility is in terms of maybe it's this color shade and not that color shade. Right. Or maybe it's this millimeters big and not that millimeters big, something like that. Is that where the f mm -hmm. flexibility comes in? Well, for me, uh, people, so I'm thinking about some like motivation theory stuff. Right. And uh, so y y those your stakeholder is saying, okay, here are the, here are the, the requirements, right? We have to meet these specific requirements, but when people are able to have some degree of um, autonomy in how 
they do that, right? And I, I mean, not to say that we, we want them to use established good processes, right? If the, if that's there, right? So um, we can't have everybody going rogue, right? <laughs> but but to allow them to have a voice and input into how things are being done, you know, a, a little maybe a little bit of job crafting. And a little bit of um, at, at least at least acknowledging that they've been heard, I think can can go um, towards helping with that flexibility. But but mm-hmm. you still have to re- meet. I mean, you know, if you're if you're Apple, you're going for six sigma or better. In other words, you're going for um, something that is statistically perfect, right? Um, a, a very small mm-hmm. uh, amount of, of, of variance, right? It was, I think six Sigma is 3.5 parts per million or something like that, 3.4 parts per million of defects, right? Yep. So you have to hit that. Um, how we get there is going to, there, there's, there's a certain degree of discipline, like I said, and, 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 uh, rigidity that you have to have for that, but at the same time, um, we don't live in a rigid world, <laughs> so you know we have to be able to adapt. Great, it's well said, Rich. Thank you. I was thinking back with the personality types and the stakeholders, the the personality types of the stakeholders, right, and the motivation of, say, a business owner. And their willingness to trust the people that they have brought on to get from point A to point B, right? I like what you said, Rich, about you can have a rigid business owner or a very driven leader with a very specific vision, but that leader may trust the people that he has or she has recruited and and given the opportunity to join that team. And you would hope that perhaps there is some flexibility, you know, here's, here's where we're starting. Here's where I need you to take this. See me in a week, you know, that would be great. Right. But it better right. be that thing that I have explained. I need to, to get from you. Right. Yep. And that's, that's cultural. That's personality. That's management styles. And I think that's one of the reasons why, uh, you know, we we hear a lot in um, recruitment about some of the soft skills that they're looking for, right? Because uh, there, some of some of the most sought after uh, soft skills. Uh, I, I I just um I, I was just doing a little bit of research uh, earlier. Or it was like later last week uh, for my class that I'm teaching, right? And so on HR. And some of those soft skills are adaptability, resilience, problem solving. Getting you know, these along. Are, these are things that... Getting along with others. Getting along with that? others. Getting along with others. <laughs> collaboration. Right. Collaboration. Yep. Absolutely. Right. But that all, that, that, that I think all plays into have, have being able to be flexible enough to... You know, when things go awry or, you know, we've talked about that in the past, right? right? To be able to adapt and... And And that's that's where boards come into it sometimes, right? A board can say, look, you know, this leader is is downright maniacal. We're losing too many people. This has to change, right? Yeah. That's an extreme situation. For sure. Yep. And how often have we seen that where the, you know, the board of directors says we, you know, we have a vote of no confidence in this, this person, you know, as a, as a leader. So we need to, we need to make some change. Right. So there is some degree of that. that happens. Right. Something you said, Rich, about flexibility and having too much, too much flexibility and people going rogue made me think of a company like Zappos, where at one point they were trying to experiment with a completely horizontal culture. So essentially no layers of management, things like that. And essentially every, every person or every team had the ability to return, 
sanction returns or you know, very flexible return policy for shoes or things that people ordered. If it wasn't perfect, they could just send it back, no questions asked. And maybe that works in that company because of the way it was set up. And that speaks to Cheryl, some of the things you were saying about collaborative culture and trusting culture and those values of customer first, and we're going to do whatever it takes to make the customer happy. And, and maybe that's where that sort of flywheel comes into effect, where in that case, you have a ton of flexibility. And a, in some cases, companies might look, some more conservative companies might look at that and think that that is just like completely employees gone rogue and, and Lord of the Jungle type stuff. But other companies may be able to learn a little bit from that approach in terms of how you engender some of that trust in your middle management layer or in your lower layers to where they can do a lot of things that need to get done and you don't really care exactly how they get done as long as they're done in the right way you know right being legal ethical those kinds of things sure they get your company to where it needs to be from a delivering products or services perspective is does zappo still run on that kind of culture do you know i don't know i don't know either i don't know I suspect yeah. it's sort of balanced out into a, a little bit of a, of a hybrid of there's management and there's teams and there's a lot of flexibility relative to other companies like, you know, you would imagine, but um, I can't imagine that it's completely, you know, everybody is their own little mini Zappos. Right, right, right. That's, it's one of the, one of the, uh, parts of some of the coaching that's out there, right. Is to systematize a business to a point where it's, uh, you know, it, 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 it can be saleable or, you know, franchise. Um, some other company can take it over. Yeah. Franchise type model. Right. So, um, uh, I, I can't imagine that if you, if you let that go indefinitely, you know, so that, so I, I, I maybe there, maybe maybe I don't know maybe there are these part parts of where in the innovation parts of of what a company does that makes sense. Um, you know, let's just throw spaghetti at the wall and see what happens. You know, uh, and, but uh, but I, I I I can't help but to think there's there's got to be some degree of discipline at some point where. We're, we're, we're putting it into a, some kind of a framework that's replicable, you know? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because to take on that accountability, I would imagine that there would need to be a, a, a motivation and reward system baked into that as, as well. You know, going back to the Zappos example. Yeah. Which, which, you know, you, you, now, now you have to have, you have to have flexibility of going from something that's, that's, you know, freewheeling to something that's more rigid, right? So now you're taking those people that were, uh, oh, I, you know, I love that I can do whatever I want to, and I can, you know, you know, go to, uh, you know, my my sit with my friends in my beanbag chair and all that stuff, you know, the and then now. We're, we're in meetings again, <laughs> you know, so we, yeah, and, and, and we have, we have to go back to, you know, some, some degree of framing out how my business is, it, it, my, my, my daily business is, is done. You know? We've joked before about the psychological safety beanbag, or at least I have, maybe nobody gives anything I, about that, but I, I, I always like to joke about it, but maybe we need to have a flexibility beanbag because it's, just structured enough to keep you. I'm hitting the in, floor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to keep you in the bag, mm-hmm. but it's flexible enough to kind of let you sit and be how you want to be within. Our merch, oh, our merch just good. keeps getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, the pool of harmonious workplaces merchandise just grows. Flexibility being bag. We'll have to think about that. Uh, so, what is it? It's a it's a, it's a frame, but it has a beanbag inside of it. No, 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 it's just a beanbag. 
It's just a bean bag. Yeah. That's the uh, trick, Rich. They're all just a bean like bag. <laughs> <laughs> we just stitch a little title into them forever. Oh, uh, I don't know. The, the, the high S in my disc is going, I don't know how much I like the, the movement of all this bean bag. <laughs> Clearly, we have to work on our uh, so, marketing and communications for that. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're about we're about at that point where we need to be wrapping this uh, this up. And um, do you what, what would you say? You know, we always say, you know, what's this one thing? And I don't know if we have this one thing yet on this one, but what would you say is is something that you're going to take away from this today? I love the idea, the concept of scenario planning. And if a leadership team can have a couple of those in their back pocket, I think it will make everything a little bit easier if they have to be flexible when something unexpected happens. But Mm -hmm. it takes a leader to make that an important part of the pre-planning because not everyone values the effort that could take. Love it. I keep coming back to the 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 knowledge Cheryl dropped at the start of the show, just in terms of if you have your vision and your values, those are great guideposts and great guardrails. And I think a lot of the 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 nuances and the details of how you live those and when you bring those to the fore, you can have flexibility there. But if your company is is really um, randomly flexible about your vision and your values or your why, I think that's, that's where you're going to run into issues. And so sure. as a middle manager or as someone who's kind of on the ground doing stuff day in and day out, you can use those and refer back to those and say, you know, this is, this is how we are as a company. This is, this is what we do. This is how we behave here. You can do X, you can do Y as long as it's within the, the frame of that. I, th- I think yeah. that allows enough of that flexibility so that people have that agency and the self-efficacy that we talked about. Yeah. So essentially, and I, I agree, I think, uh, uh, you you hit that spot on and, uh, you know, even so we we're talking about and uh, go back to the class I'm teaching right now, you know, we're, we're actually talking about like human resources planning right now mm-hmm. and, you know, it really all, all that planning starts with having a vision and a, and a mission related to that vision. Um, so that, that, you know, we've, we've talked about that. That's, that's gotta be crystal clear. Um, but that, uh, having a, having the culture that is, that has enough of a framework where everybody can, um, you know, work within certain parameters, but, has enough freedom to allow people to be and act as the people that they are, um, you know, is going to allow for that flexibility to take place. So. Agreed. Cool. 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 Very cool. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to take us out this week. So uh, thanks. Thanks for joining us, everybody. And uh, until we meet again, make change your friend. Thanks for listening to Harmonious Workplaces. You can find Harmonious Workplaces on LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, Apple, and other streaming platforms. We'd love any feedback on whatever channel you find us on. Please rate, like, and share our podcast with your network. And remember to add Harmonious Workplaces to your list of favorites to get notified about each new episode. To contact Rich or Cheryl, please visit www workbalanceconsulting.com to connect with Ben find him on LinkedIn or visit at www.harborsidestrategy.com